Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the round table of dim lighting, I'm going to be telling you about a controversial practice instituted by a restaurant that I would like to get our opinion on. Okay, and I'm going to tell you about rugby. Oh, buckle up! <laughs> I'm going to tell you how rugby is. You know? You're going to tell me about rugby? <laughs> yeah, I've learned about rugby. <laughs> but I want you to start because this sounds... This sounds like this sounds sweet, man. This sounds like a hot take. This sounds like it might be controversial. Um, yeah, because I I purposely have not yet formed my opinion about this. Okay, I, like, so I was like, oh, you mean, you know, I'll let's, do that. Let's, for let's you. have some real time fin- <laughs> opinion forming. Okay. Okay. Um, so, you know, I get a lot of my news from food and wine. <laughs> That's not true. It's not even a good joke. But this no. does got this does come from food um, and wine. Unless you get news from actual food and wines. Foods and wines. Well, that could be a new thing. It's like a delivery service and you get like uh bananas and other things with skins on them and we use some high tech printing device to print like the morning news on your bananas. I think you're talking about Laffy Taffy, my friend. Well, no, no. If like Laffy Taffy, Laffy Taffy is a is had a news manufacturing of, process that takes a while. I'm talking about day of fresh bananas. We print them. What's the What's the news today? What's the news? Put it on the bananas. Send the bananas to the homes. Uh, banana I, news. I think they banana can make news. La- banana news. Banana news. We just no. came up with banana news. No man, I'm still no, no. On yes, Laffy this is Taffy. the best thing we've ever come up with. Nope. This is the best thing we've come up with in years. Nope. Banana news. <laughs> we have bananas. They have news. You get them on your doorstep before they turn brown. You know all about what's going on around town. Whoa! Wow. Well, Whoa! I, I mean, I'm on fire. <laughs> I'm a little concerned that banana news are bruised banana news. No, no. Because if you're gonna print the news no, no. on a banana news, then the bananas are gonna be bruised. Our proprietary printing technology does not damage the banana skins. It is a laser print. It happens from a distance. There is no pressing. No, pr- no. We're not dealing with a ribbon, my no friend. No pressure. No pressure. It's laser etching. There's, there's no jet of an ink. It's not ink. It's lasers. It's and it's burning. And it's edible. Completely edible. Because it's just, it's a little burnt mark. And I'm glad well, you on. brought that up. I, well, the peel's not the edible. Pe- oh, okay. Now, okay. The first news article that this we're going to- This just in <laughs> with banana news. The first <laughs> article that we're going to put on bananas. Are edible. I've told you this. I, I put them in my freaking- They're only edible if you put them in your smoothie. God e- Extra dang. fiber. Lots of extra fiber. Lots of extra banana flavor. <clears throat> You need to use organic though, because and all ours will be organic because there's a lot of pesticides on non-organic banana skins. I hear that. So anyway, banana. This news. just in on banana news. They've discovered a banana that doesn't taste like a um, banana. Yes, that's what I want to hear. Oh gosh, listen, you're okay. Well, this is a solo project yet again. Saying, yet again, another solo project for uh, banana <laughs> news because he doesn't even like bananas. He doesn't I don't, like the idea. I don't hate bananas, but I don't want. And I do like fiber. Okay, name or, another fruit. Name another fruit. Apple news. Oh no, that sounds like something that exists. I've got yeah. it. I've got it on my computer uh, already. Pomegranates are just too okay. hard to get into. Nobody actually likes pomegranates. They just like the idea of liking pomegranates. I, I love a like, pomegranate. Oh, you think you love them. You think you love pomegranates. I know I love a pomegranate. You love the fruit of the pomegranate. You love the seeds if they are given to you, but the yeah, process is that's, such a difficult thing that you hate yourself by the end of it. You I'm don't actually like pomegranates. Part. I mean, it's highly stainable. Do you have someone who does it for you? Oh, yes, I have a pomegranatizer. <laughs> okay, who's your pomegranatizer? Your <laughs> wife? Uh, you get your kid to do it, don't you? What are kids for, Rhett? <laughs> If you get your kids to do it, you can enjoy it. But if you have to, if you just start with a pomegranate and then you're trying to be the one to process it to get the oh, stuff from yeah. inside. Well, you have a pomegranate tree. Do you have a pomegranate sanitizer? And it, yes, my son. Okay, well then it's great. They're great if someone else does it for you. And they're popping off right now. Well, and that ha- is just a literal statement. Okay. Um, Not a Well, how come I haven't had a basket trendy of pomegranates pomeg- 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 delivered to my door? 
I'm your virtual neighbor. Well, it seems like they make you upset. Well, I did. I know. I no. I've got a son as well. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a son who can we can teach as well. How many pomegranates do you make in these days? Um, we're on the precipice of I don't know anywhere from two years ago we had like probably thirty eight come off of that little tree. How many of those did you consume? Not enough. We what, were, what happened to the rest of them? We Gifts we that were, were taken around to the neighbors. Yeah. Individually wrapped. And then some of them went bad. They burst on the vine, sadly. But this no, just in on no banana news. news. Pomegranate news. The Actually, Neils are wasting their pomegranates. Uh, yeah, banana news. I don't think we're going to get any better than that. I don't think we're going to get any better than that. I think we've peaked. You know what? I'll Then I'll start to like bananas. I, I, I want fiber so bad well, that I got I'm it. willing I to got acquire it. the taste of you. bananas in order to put the peel in my smoothie. Well, and there's no, I mean, do you put that like hard stem? You don't put that in there. Because uh, that, no, I don't do that. Because all of a sudden you're going to choke on it. I could though. It's just, I feel like it might be too much work for my blender. It would, you it got would a weak it, blender? Though. It would do it. And I got a strong blender, but that stem is real hard. It's a lot harder than you think. Um, why don't you just put flaxseed in there? I put ground, I do. I put ground flaxseed in there. Every day. Every day. I needed a little bit more this morning, apparently. And I told I ran out this morning because we have a jar and we keep the flaxseed in it. And Chrissy was in the kitchen and I'm sitting there making my smoothie. And I'm like, I try to be nice about it. You know, so I'm very appreciative of the fact that like she 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 shops at the grocery store, right? Like the majority of the time. Okay, yeah, yeah. The majority can be anywhere from fifty-one percent to one. Right. Let's just leave it to one hundred percent. Uh, we have started going as just a little tangent. We have started going to the grocery store together. Oh, cool. More often. What do you do? Um, I push cart. Good. And sometimes I'll go ahead and get something. You That's don't you. go hungry, though. You don't go to the grocery store hungry. No. Don't do that. So this morning I said, um, can you add flaxseed to the list? I always get I always get a little cagey when I start to ask, can you put something on the list, especially when it's like, because it's like it's, I'm consuming something, and, it, and she's like, well, I just went yesterday. Mm. And I was like, oh, man, now, now you what? You had to wait how long? I don't know, like a week? Maybe three weeks. What? Well, it, it's I go we to the get grocery it, store every three we weeks. We get it at Trader Joe's, and we we're, don't go to Trader we're Joe's like every week. French people over here, baguette under the arm every day. <laughs> <laughs> my, yeah, wife, but, my wife rides her bike right back from Ralph's every day with a baguette <laughs> under both arms. Uh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we go to Ralph's once a week, but we go to Trader Joe's like th once a month, maybe once oh, every three weeks, Joe's and run. that's where the flaxseed is. Well, there's flaxseed we at Ralph's as well, just so you know, oh, and also it? on Amazon. <laughs> huh, yeah. yeah, there's like multiple sources. I could probably get you some within 30 minutes of this podcast. Well, she got it to me in seconds, because I turned around and flump, right there, she slammed it down, and she was like, oh, you didn't believe that I, that I knew we needed the flaxseed. She, she was already offended. Knew. She already She knew. was offended that I didn't. I was like, add it to the list, and she was like, I already got it. Okay. I and will... I'm like, hey, 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 we're on the same team. But do you know? You buy the flaxseed, I eat the flaxseed. We're just different positions it's on the not... team. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have a suggestion for you, because I, I think you've also, you're using Google Keep for some of your notes as well, right? Some of your notes. Are they being shared with you? Because I don't want you reading all my keeps. Well, only if you do share them with me. But yes. So I started, the reason I started using Google Keep, I still use Evernote for like long-term stuff, right? Really? Oh, because like you- Like journaling, because it's all in there. You didn't you know? port everything. Or over. like certain ideas about certain things in certain categories. It's like, it's, it's, it's all in there. It's, I'm not a huge fan of the way it works, but I'm not, I don't want to change. Apple Notes, like stickies, basically. Yeah, like the po Post-its. I still use those for like very short-term things. But then for shorter-term things that I need to share, I need to have a collaborative nature to, I use Google Keep. Here's why. Because you, my friend, also have Google Home at your home. Yeah. 
And so all you have to do is say, hey, girl, add flaxseed to the family grocery list. And it automatically adds it to the family grocery list. I can just say it anywhere in my house. It adds it to the grocery list. And my anyone who, who, who Shepard can add, Jesse can add. And so what? then the next person who goes to the grocery store, which um, it could be me. It's not uncommon. You're not above it. Has the you list pull it right up. there. And then you check it off as you get it. Ching, 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 check. Check it off. Yeah. And does it disappear? It goes down below and you oh, see. Oh, shit. And so then you can be like, oh, I wonder if she got flaxseed. And then you look down there and like, flaxseed checked off the list. Bam. I don't even have to look in the cabinet. It's on the list. It's been checked. Modern, welcome to 2023, man. Bananus. It's, well, that's the second article in the tech section <laughs> of Bananus. <laughs> Everyone this should just be using for collaborative news. notes. Not a sponsor. But do you get to the get to oh. the the restaurant. We had so much fun with bananas. Okay, Georgia restaurant goes viral after charging parents a fifty dollar fee for poorly behaved children. Ah, uh, <laughs> Georgia restaurant. Y'all know about this. Y'all heard about this. Mm -hmm. Is what now? Uh, well, they're charging parents a fifty dollar fee for poorly behaved children. Now, what this is how this all started. Is this? Well. It's a restaurant called Tacoa Riverside Restaurant in northern Georgia, and they are, quote, according to them, the home of mountain time seating. Seating? Seating. Mountain time seating. What? I don't even know what that is. And I don't mean uh, a seating, like oh, sit, seating. Oh, not seating. 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 The mountain. home of mountain time seating, like sitting. What, what is mountain time seating? I, I, it's, it might be a configuration of seating. I, I I feel like I need to see pictures. I need to know because this may help inform my opinion about this. Maybe, what is mountain? What, what, how would well, you sit in the northern, mountains? I, I bet you there's a certain time. Well, mountain time where you sit in the seat and mountain watch time the mountains. is a time zone, but this isn't. They're not. In, they're in the eastern time zone, so it's not a time zone. They're in the mountains. Mountain time is just a time being in actual mountains, and they're the home of the mountain time seating. I think it could be. Hmm. There's a certain time of the day when you want to sit and watch the mountains because of the sun just dancing off of it. Well, they are in a place called Blue Ridge, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So is there a time when they're most blue? What is the time when the mountains are the most blue? I would think it was either it was either the morning or the evening. Uh, dusk. We're talking post-sunset. Post-sunset. I think that's called dusk. So mountain time comes and around and you mountains. sit down at this restaurant and you eat. And, and, and you actually, don't want to be disturbed by children. by children. See, now I understand why they lead with that. But actually, my prevailing theory here okay. is that there is a brand called Mountain Time, and they make chairs. Okay. So like the front porch of a Cracker Barrel situation? Yeah, they sell chairs. Mm. It's like, well, oh, you go over to someone's house and they're like, Oh, you have a mountain time chair. Oh, wow. Oh, can I, can I sit in it? I mean, I know it's not quite it's, time yet, but it's like an I want to be prepared. It's like an Adirondack, but it's a little more upright. And it rocks. And it rocks. It rocks. I'm making all this up. I like to rock while eating. A lot of people say don't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. A lot of doctors no. say don't do that. Mountain time I disagree is with them. gazing at the mountains. It's while the food is digesting, though. You've eaten already, and then you go, you sit out, and you watch the mountains. But they don't. You don't want to eat and watch a movie. At the we same don't time. actually know the answer to what mountain time seating no. is. I think it's a. We've, brand. Got, we've gotten a little hung we up on a, it, actually. There is mountain time chairs, and they are wooden rocking chairs. <laughs> <laughs> we were right. And they look, they look straight out of Montana. That's what it looks like. Straight out of Montana. Yeah, North that, I will say the problem is is that it, it, the, it, on the website it shows Colorado and not Georgia, so I don't. It's the home of mountain time seating. So I seating, still though. am not sure if if. I don't know if we could call it the home of, I don't know if that's it. Well, if they <laughs> did call it the home. Hold on, I'm, listen. I'm about to dig in. If into I this. buy a Lazy Boy chair and put it in my home, I can say, welcome to the home of Lazy Boy seating because <laughs> it's my home and I've got Lazy Boy. Oh. Maybe they only I have mountain that's what it chairs. is, y'all. They have, they have mountain time branded chairs at their locale. Wow. Well, and you can't get anything so past these we're, boys. We're, we are right twice. Mm. It's a brand. I think the only thing I contributed is the rocking. So I got that part right. Um, so they say it's the home of mountaintop seating. They don't say it is the birthplace of mountaintop seating. Tacoa or the Riverside Restaurant in Northern Georgia is the home of mountaintop seating. And, 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 and food and wine, 
They just said, we're not sure what exactly that means. Oh, they I said I mean, they that. didn't even do the research. They're we didn't lazy. do research, we just speculated and got it right. Right, That's right. what you gotta do with these days. Right, just bullshit your way forward, food and wine. Here's the thing, yeah, you're just talking about food and wine, it's not life or death. Good gracious. Okay, um, but someone posted a photo to one of our uh, favorite Reddit threads, I think, Mildly interesting. I, 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 there's, you know, you don't want to be too percolated. Right, right. You just want to. You almost. I, you want, I don't think I use that term. You right. want to flirt with boredom. <laughs> right. You know, it's like that's why you're on your on Reddit anyway. You're flirting with boredom. Right. It's well. It's just like when you're in a gambling, like you're in a gambling uh, uh, zone. Zone. Uh, yep. uh, uh, trance. Stupor. Trance. Stupor. Trance. You're in a gambling trance when you're at the slot machines. You don't want to win too much. You don't want to lose too much. You want to be mildly interested so they can just keep taking all your money. Right, right. So they put uh, this person, uh, Pineapple Pizza Lover, which that's controversial. So they charge $50. Well, here's the thing. The original thing was a picture of the menu, which has at least four fonts that I'm seeing here. Love that. And it just said, gratuity of $20, 20% may be added to parties over six, separate checks, birthday menu. Adult surcharge for adults unable to parent, and it's three dollar signs, right? Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> that was the first thing that it's people started adult, talking about. Okay, it, yeah, so they're not charging. They charge the adults for the not not being able to parent the okay. children. That makes sense. <laughs> Adult surcharge, and then when you do a little bit of digging, it, but there's no dollar amount, right? But the digging revealed multiple sources have reported uh, that at least one person has said that they were charged $50 for their bad behavior. I can read a little bit about that situation. Uh, let's see. Because uh, they said $3 signs, so you, I mean, you gotta be ready. The charge which some Google reviews have reported as a flat $50 fee has been reported several times in the past two weeks. The most, this is quote, this mo the most disrespectful owner made a huge scene in front of the entire restaurant because our children were running through the restaurant, quote. One recent Google review reads, the children were down by the river. We were told we need to go to Burger King and Walmart and that we were bad parents. They have a $50 surcharge for bad children. Another reviewer wrote that he was disappointed <laughs> because although he says that his children watched a tablet until their meals arrived, could have watched the mountains. Don't get me started I mean, okay. on that. Uh, until their meals arrived, his family was charged $50 because of my children's behavior. What do you think about this? You've, you've been to restaurants, you have children. They're not kids anymore, though. They're not the kind of kids that misbehave. They're older. Yeah, I just want to preface everything I'm about to say with an acknowledgement of my position of privilege. Oh, that's always a good thing to do, Link. I have children. This is a man who grows pomegranates at his house, okay? <laughs> so many that some of them die on he the just, vine. He lets pomegranates die in his yard. This is a man of privilege. I have children who are ad adults. Yep. I have two of those, and then I have one that is 13, but is one of the most amazing people I've ever met. I think he's and I'm, 14. I'm, I'm, I'm biased. No, uh, don't, <laughs> don't mess with my mind now. He's 13. Oh, he'll be 14 in like March. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Or or February, whenever his birthday is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't have to remember exactly when they're. I know all of their birthdays, but I I can't always match up which birthday to who person. Yeah. This is making you look like you don't care. So let's just move on past that. You know. Well, he, that's kind of my point. He knows. He knows. That's kind of my point. He knows. When I, I mean, I'm I'm coasting. I know you're well past coasting. You've talked about this many times. You talk about like parenting. I have a fifteen. I have a fifteen year old. Right. And that's the youngest you got. Another adult, you know. It's like historically, we, he would have had a wife and kids and a farm. We are living He's on his so own. large. Like we basically, oh my gosh, we we made it through the fire, yep. man. So now we can ridicule parents and say that you know what? Look at us. We made it through. Mm -hmm. Tablets at the table. Yep. When my kids were growing up, we didn't even have tables. No, I mean tablets. <laughs> we didn't have. We, we didn't even have phones with like streaming stuff that they could watch at well, the we table. had tablets, but they were pills. Right. It was like, you give your kid a right. tablet at the restaurant? What are you talking, what is this, a Tylenol situation? What did my kid do at the table when they were like young, like like pre-reading age? I, 
I don't remember, right, but I'm going to say that they were quiet. Mm. I'm going to say that mm. they were well behaved. Okay, no, this is speculating, right? Quite a bit. I'm, I don't, I don't remember at all. Okay. Okay. You know, all right. it's uh, I've wiped it clean. It was, it was a nightmare. It was <laughs> yeah. horrible. Yeah, I mean, it was like you got these people that for you just love. You can't help but love dearly, and you can't get them to shut up and. Be quiet and stop talking and be don't you know it's just it's just it's just a bad oh my gosh I'm so glad I'm through it this is quite an endorsement oh my for God. fatherhood like oh I mean just give up on going anywhere with them don't take them anywhere so I can ask your opinion on this news story okay I'm all for this uh, other people like me who've made it through the fire of a of parenthood want to go to places and we don't want to remember. We don't want to be reminded huh. of what happened because we blocked it out. So, you know, I'll pay the fee for you, for you to just get it. Just go to Walmart and Burger King. Yes. I just don't. I don't want to remember. Well, it, gets it was even just worse. too. It was just too hard. It gets even it worse. It was too torturous. There was another they, family. They don't, they don't listen. There was another family uh, there that is a part of this article. Uh, that they had five families, and their group included eleven children between the ages of three and eight. <laughs> that can't be true. Okay. Oh God, I'm I'm crying for these parents. These dumb parents okay, I think don't know how to use birth control. You've made your well. That's that's five families and eleven kids. Oh. I mean, that's not. I mean, okay. you've got three. This kids. commune of parents. You have. By the way, you have more kids than the average number of kids in an American family. So you got no room to talk. And I, I'm so happy, and I don't regret it a minute because I don't remember it. Okay, I appreciate your strong opinion about this. Um, I. I love my children. I like to now think that I could have like a little bit of sympathy. Like sometimes you see somebody on a plane. A plane's even worse than a restaurant. You see somebody on a plane with an infant and you think about, oh, I was like, that was so hard. My wife, mm. very empathetic person. And not just an empathetic person, but an actively empathetic person. So some people feel, some people feel and do. She is a feeler and a doer. So okay. she will help a mom that has multiple kids or a crying yeah. baby or something like that in those situations. Change a diaper? Uh, that hasn't happened because that can get a little awkward. So you really probably shouldn't even offer to do that, just so mm -hmm. you know, just set some boundaries. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. However. Perform the Heimlich? In fact, given the fact that I am empathetic to this situation. I think that the spirit behind this particular fee is that what your party does, and maybe your kids are part of your party, impacts the level of enjoyment of the other people who are paying to have an experience. So another way to think about this is we shouldn't just charge for badly behaved kids. We should find other things to charge for because what about the person who's talking too loudly there at a restaurant? Go. List $25. Yes. $30 maybe. Yes to that. Okay. You know. Yes to that. What about the person who, I know some people can't help it, but what about the person who just has a hellacious coughing fit? Right. Just a crazy, uh, unappetizing coughing fit. I'm thinking there's phlegm. There's lots mm -hmm. of things happening. You should be leaving the restaurant. You should be outside. That's a $60 fee because oh. I've lost my appetite. Right, right, yeah. You know if, what I'm saying? If, Not, if, I got to get a doggy bag now if, because if, you flimmed all over the place. If it leads to a loss of patrons' appetite, that's at least $60. Right, right, right. Open sores. <laughs> you got to open right. sore Throw a above the table. Now, on if the got, sore. If you've got, right. if you got leg wounds, as long as I'm not seeing them, that's fine. Or smelling them. You got to open wound. Bandage it. You got to bandage it. And then you got to put fabric. You got to make it a fashion statement. And because I don't want nothing oozing through that gauze. I mean, we don't listen. I'm just saying, if we're taking into account everyone's experience, these are the the loud talker thing. I will say, there's a caveat to this that I want to explore quickly. Jesse, if and I, it's interesting, well, Jesse and I once went to a bed and breakfast that had an attached restaurant. It wasn't actually a bed and breakfast within the home, but it was it had an attached restaurant. Weird. And we went into this restaurant for our included breakfast, and uh, it was one of those restaurants that was so quiet that mm. you feel like you have to talk like this. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I, I mean, 
if I, if we talk if we were talking at this volume that's a bit much the only other family that was there would hear everything we were saying it wasn't really a family it was two, it was four older people right and there was yeah. one elderly woman that was at this table yeah and we were in north carolina and she was talking about this loud but she was giving North Carolina historical information. Oh, there you go. See? And so we got quiet and we listened to the lecture. Free tour. So I felt like I could even pay this woman because I felt like I was taught something, but I was only I was interested in it. It can go both ways. I think if you contribute to the corporate dining experience, you should get a little stipend. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so if you're if talking loudly. That's a fee, but if you're talking loudly and everyone likes it, right? If it's you like, get paid, you get a free meal, you get maybe a free dessert. If it's local tidbits, oh, a little five dollars, a little ten spot here and there, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And if it's at this place, I'm just thinking out loud, workshopping here. If it's at this place, and maybe these people at the Tacoa River Restaurant have a deal with Mountain Time Seating. This is what we're guessing. Yep. So you might go as far as to say Mountain Time Seating as a sponsor of them. So now you get a loud talker. Uh -huh. You could plant a loud talker who begins to sing the praises <laughs> of Mountain Time Seating. Uh, this, uh -uh. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. You, you got like you dining got a, integration. <laughs> you got, you know, yes, we got built-in integrations to the person giving the local tidbits. Local tip. Oh, everybody, get quiet! This woman at this table is talking about local tidbits of historical information. Oh no, she's talking about her chair. Oh, she's really okay. And next thing you know, you're this family's walking out. With a couple of mountain time seats. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you get commission there, on that. There, somebody's got to be. What, right. What's the proper exchange of goods in that situation? Right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'd say you get a 10% finder's fee. Finder's fee. I mean, if I'm going up, going to the bathroom, if I'm encountering four tables on the way there and I decide to say, hey, y'all need anything? Are you like a waiter? No, exactly. Maybe a little bit, just in this one instance. Y'all want some sweet and low? Y'all need another hush puppy? So and you then become I'm like there. a volunteer, volunteer waiter. Right. Just because. With the hope of making a little scratch? Just, yeah. There you go. Just a, I, want, I don't want to make gonna anything. Who's going to pay you? It's going to be taken off my bill. Okay. So you go to the restaurant. It's and a you discount. Y'all need a little sweet and low. They say, yes, you get it. You bring it to them. Mm -hmm. Then you go from the bathroom mm -hmm. to the manager. And you say, hey, not to scratch my own back here, but right. these people needed sweet and low, and I got it for them in a little gap when the waiter wasn't right. there. You so, leave them a little note. You know. That's why I care about posted notes. And we don't have any kids with us. <laughs> so, And we're really enjoying the mountain time seats. You yeah. might get a, a, a small discount. I think about the arc light, you know, may they rest in peace, my favorite movie theater. Yeah, they wouldn't, sucks. they didn't have a children's fee. They didn't have a children's ticket. Everybody had to it pay the It was a same. flat fee. Did they have so, senior discounts? I uh, don't know. Yeah, Probably not in L.A. Not many seniors. Not I many think, seniors around I think here. Maybe seniors are okay. But there was this... They're quiet. It was a subtle thing that's like, all right, if you're looking to bring your children and, you're, and you expect to save a little money, this is not the place for that. You know, we're not telling you you can't bring your kids, but we're... De incentivizing. Yes. We're we're disincentivizing. Yes. You bring in your children. We don't really want them. You kind of want to do a leave them know. at home with a tablet. Right. They'll be okay. It's just a few hours. Right. Right. A tablet, tablet and some tater chips and and probably liquid. Maybe a hint, one of the hamster yeah. bottles. Yeah. Yeah. With some Hawaiian <laughs> punch in it. Well, I not too much sugar. You want to regulate the sugar intake. Right. But but you're right. They should be charging for disruptive. It, uh, well, let me put it the way they put it, for not proper parenting. Now, it's a very dangerous place mm -hmm. to start critiquing other people's parenting techniques. But I think the, the line for if, me is if you, if how you started, quickly you get the situation under control. Your kid starts crying in a performance. Take them out! Get them out! Get them out. out! It's okay that they cried. It's okay that you brought them. But once they start crying, get them out! Out of there! And if your kids are doing just hellion type things inside of a restaurant and you seem to not be engaged at all. Right. To the gotta, river. You gotta <laughs> take, <laughs> take the kids to the river. Behind or behind the shed. You know, to me, it's I, I, I have kids are hard to control. You say a lot of things before you have kids. We've earned the right to forget. 
I haven't forgotten. I want to be clear about that. When I see somebody dealing with a kid situation, I'm like, damn, that was hard. I have empathy. But then when I'm like, well, but I would not have let the, the, this go on this long. I would have, we would have gotten out of the yeah. situation. We would have removed ourselves from the situation. And a kid with a tablet, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I wish we had tablets, man. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about this tablet. I mean, it's so easy to judge because we didn't we we didn't have but that. But we, I mean, they the kids did watch a lot of television though. I just there was a lot of like Baby Einstein, but they're gonna it, be real smart for that. I, I, you know, it, every Einstein. every parent except like on an extreme end of the scale is just like you're worn down over time, and there's there's a there you just have a le level of resignation. And it's like, oh my God, if you just give them the damn tablet, they'll be quiet. It's hard to say. And we can say have no. dinner because we don't have a, it's so hard to find a babysitter and somebody that you trust and, you know, this, that, and the other. It's like, I, I understand. It sounds like you're but backtracking a little bit. I do understand. You but I write an apology letter on bananas. But I'm going to say, <laughs> it's so hard to not judge on the outside. I mean, it's just, I don't, it's because I've forgotten. That's why. I'm just, oh, a, a tablet, huh? So you don't want to, why even bring them? Oh, so you're saying you're really judging the tablets. You're, you oh, judge yeah. the tablets. I judge that tablet so hard, and I know I'm not right. I'm not right, but I cannot help it. I just like, it just seems like. But also, let me just say. Parental failure. It's just, it's, it's just like a billboard but, for parental failure. But, but let me, let me but, just and say. I know it, and I know it's not. You had easy kids. Let's just be let's just be real about it. A lot of times people with I had great parenting techniques. People with easy mild-mannered children. Yeah. Have you know, you had a you had a girl first who was the oldest one who kind of kept the boys in line and I had to Well, hold on. Let, get, get, let's give credit where credit's due. It probably has something to do with genes. <laughs> I, you, you and Christy are great parents, but what I'm saying is that what I have learned over time, and not just observing myself as a father and my wife as a mother, and but other people, it's just like, so much of it has to do with the disposition of the children. And I'm not saying, my kids weren't not well behaved. My kids, the level of energy that my boys brought to any situation that they found themselves in was a, was a few notches up. And so, mm -hmm. And but I think that we kind of account. We didn't take them to nice places most of the most of the time. It'd be yeah. like I'm not going to take my kids to a place where mountain view seating, yeah, mountain time seating. Mountain we don't time. need that. You know, we need regular seating for these children. Right. It's it's a tough it's a tough time. So sometimes I'm like, okay, you've got you, you, oh yeah, your kid is so well behaved. It's like well. That kid would probably be well behaved in any family. I mean, I'm just, it's probably, I mean, that's, and I think that's what, that's what, I'm not saying you're not a good parent. I'm just saying that's actually what most of the child psychologists say is that the, the, what it, yeah, that's what it makes you feel better. <laughs> My kids are well behaved. My kids are well behaved, but their level of energy was kind of difficult to manage at several points in their childhood. Get them out! And so we got them out or we didn't take them in. <laughs> like I was never, and you once, had the luxury of having, Family nearby. Never once at that time period. Well, Shepard was two when we moved to LA, so we experienced a lot oh, yeah. of young, young yeah, Shepard. Never once in the history that I can remember have we been asked by another family, another person, a, a wait staff, a manager, or anything to get our kids in line. That never happened because the moment that it felt like it was happening, we got them out. Get them out. Yeah, it's tough. It sucks. It sucks being a parent. Um, it's also the most beautiful and rewarding thing that. Um, um, well, it's harder now. It's hard because think about it, especially in LA. We know it, <laughs> I did, especially when the kids were babies. We were in North Carolina. You have family, you have friends, oh, you, have, you have this network of people. <sighs> that is a little bit more reminiscent of what you would have had like for all of human history, which is just like your kids being a little asshole. Well, somebody else that you know and trust really, really well that like lives in the hut next to you is going to help you discipline your child. That's like mm -hmm. the most of human history, right? Yeah. 
And now we're in this place where we, we, we know these, we got some young parents here at Mythical and it's just like finding somebody that you trust with your kids. Very difficult to do in a place where you're kind of just, you don't have any family. You yep. got good friends, but like, they ain't gonna babysit your kids. You gotta <laughs> no. find somebody who's willing to take care of your kids. It's a totally different game. People are like on these little family islands now. So you're like, we yeah. got to get out of this. And you bring your chaos into the mountain time scene. Let's go to North Georgia. Right? Let's go to sit and watch the Blue Mountains. You know, and you yeah. haven't it's accounted tough. for it. It's, 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 I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to you're it. You're between a rock and a hard place here. Mm -hmm. I, got, got, I got nothing for you but, but empathy, as I've <laughs> thoroughly uh, demonstrated. We have more to talk about, but we do want to talk about the Mythical Cookbook. You want me to hold it up? I do. So this is something that's been a long time coming. We have incredible kitchen staff. You know, I mean, you looking. You look. You look. You look. You look in the middle. What, when we do an ad, I do. I'm gonna, over, I'm gonna put it next to your head. Look over there. Jamie, what do you do when we go to an ad like this? I go to the wide. Table. You go to the wide. Yeah. See, I think I, I watch this show sometimes. Okay. Okay. Um, I lived it. So one of the one of the reasons that Josh has his job. You know, we originally hired Josh to help us make food on Good Mythical Morning, but we didn't really ever know that he was going to become Mythical Chef Josh that you know and love and have this whole team of people and the Mythical Kitchen was going to be its own thing. But the reason that happened is because not only did we find that Josh could cook, but he knew everything there was to know about food. And he was oh, yeah. really good at communicating it and really good at communicating it in a funny way. He could an talk loud way. at a restaurant yes. and I'd, I'd pay his bill. Exactly. So this is a culmination I'd like to pay it forward. of all that brain power and culinary innovation yes. that has driven what we do here at Mythical for a really long time in the Mythical Cookbook. Of course, I mean, we still put ourselves on the cover. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Eating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. But we're sitting down. This is bu this book is by Josh right. and the Mythical Kitchen crew, and all the recipes in there are either recipes that you have requested because you saw us eat it on the show and you thought you would love it, or some original, actually quite a few original restaurants that are in that same Mythical. Recipes. Recipes. There's no restaurants yet. <laughs> There's uh, recipes that are original recipes that kind of have that same mythical ethos. And it's actually just a fun read. Great it's, pictures. There's lots of fun parts to read, too. Uh, go to mythical.com slash cookbook and pre-order this thing so that you will be the first to get it. Start making stuff. Also, want to remind you, uh, rate and review this podcast wherever you're listening to it. Um, if you haven't done that, do it. It, it helps us out. Ear Biscuits is brought to you by BetterHelp. You might not be able to sleep because your brain is racing. I mean, your mind can get in the way of you achieving and experiencing the things that you want to experience. You know, as we're ending the year, a lot of things come up around the holidays. A lot of things that I find that I want to take to therapy. You know what I'm saying? Well, therapy can be a bright spot amid all of the stress and change, something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. We are huge advocates for therapy and accessible therapy at that. So if you're thinking of starting, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash ear today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash ear. Ear Biscuits is supported by Etsy. It's the holiday season, so we wanna talk to you about Etsy. If you're like us, you're on a mission to find handcrafted, affordable gifts made by independent sellers. Well, whether you're searching for custom home pieces like cutting boards, linens, and throw pillows for your favorite holiday hosts. <laughs> oh yeah, you talking about us, you trying to get a gift from them? Yeah, yeah. Or if you want personalized items like purses, necklaces, and seasonal jackets for your most stylish friends and family. Etsy has it. You know, Etsy is a great place to get something that you can't get anywhere else. Like yep. I've got this wooden hand cranked, I think it's called a automaton. 
It's that thing that makes like an animation I've got in the oh, creative Oh, you got house. that on Etsy? Yeah, it's because it's like a handmade craft that, that you sense. can't just go to the store and get it. I love that thing. Whether you want a handmade craft or you need something for that home chef in your life, like serveware and cookware. Or style pieces like rings, clutches, and seasonal jackets for that trim setting special someone, Etsy has it for all budgets and for any gifting mission. Are you new to Etsy? Well, use code HOLIDAY10 for 10% off your first purchase. That's code HOLIDAY10. Maximum discount value of $50 expires December 31st, 2023. See terms at etsy.com slash terms. For handcrafted and affordable gifts for everyone on your list, Etsy has it. Shop etsy.com. Ear Biscuits is supported by Manscaped. Merry balls, miss. Ho. From our friends over at Manscaped. The holidays are approaching, but what if I told you that the celebrations are starting early this year? Keep calm and let your balls jingle this season with Manscaped's brand new Performance Package 5.0 Ultra featuring the new Lawnmower 5.0. I've been mowing the lawn with the Lawnmower uh, 5.0 Ultra. Oh, yeah. It's kind of become my weekend thing. Yeah, that's my weekend thing. You know, because it's like, you yeah. feel like you've got time to just stand there naked in front of the mirror and just right. and go to work. Right. Um, I don't know, it's giving me a new level of confidence. You go to work, so then you can go to play. Right, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I'm getting, I'm, I'm more and more every day, I'm photo ready. Manscaped, well, okay. <laughs> Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is the ultimate bundle for the man who deserves it all. Included in this special sack is the lawnmower, I keep giggling through sack. this ad, but I believe in it. Um, is the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, the Weed Whacker 2.0 Ear and Nose Trimmer, which I also love, yeah, Manscaped's Liquid Formulations, which are great, and two free gifts. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra features two next gen blade heads, a standard blade trimmer for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go for that smooth finish wherever your heart desires. The Weed Whacker 2.0 Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer features proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect your delicate presence and all of these things are waterproof. The gift of Manscaped doesn't stop there. The bundle comes with two free gifts, Manscaped's boxers, 2.0 premium underwear and the Shed 2.0 toiletry bag. Get 20% off and free shipping with code EAR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code EAR. Manscaped, get your jingle balls ready for the holidays. This past weekend, I, did you have something else you wanted to? No, not about that. I have another thing okay. after you tell me about this, but. Oh, another thing. But I oh, might okay, save gotcha, it. Gotcha. I might save it. Um, this past weekend, we visited Lincoln. At, who's, who's that? It, it's um, it's a former child of mine who's oh, now. I've already forgot about him. Six, Once they leave, I, especially other families, go. I forget. I've forgotten. <laughs> Get out of here. Six. He he's a successful college freshman. Well, we're still early. He, so far, he's doing great, dude. And I'm so glad. Okay, well, you I'm know? happy for him. It's um, uh, it's good to visit him. He's he's uh, liking his roommates. He's got three of them. And uh, when we went down legal? there, it's legal. Yeah, it's um, it, the room is zoned four, for four that. beds. Yeah, and um, all the roommates' parents came down for the parents' weekend, so we were all hanging out, getting to know the other parents. And um, one couple, the mom is from South Africa, hmm. and uh, it just so happened to time out that it was the World Cup. Rugby World Cup Finals Okay, that Saturday. And so she invited all of us to this Irish bar, Irish pub. Okay. To, yeah, I don't know. Rug rugby. Yeah, yeah, they do They're that. gonna be showing the rugby game at the Irish bar. Yes, definitely, even though Ireland got out. And um, so we went there, we showed up, we spent a few hours watching the final between South Africa, this is why she was she couldn't miss it, uh, just very enthusiastic. Okay, yeah. About her rugby um, against the New Zealand All Blacks. And this is the World Cup championship. Oh yeah, this is the culmination of rugbydom, and I witnessed it. Best in the land. I got to tell you, if you're going to be introduced to the realm of rugby, I don't think there's any better place than a brackish. Irish 
pub. With someone who's passionate about <clears throat> it. With someone who is passionate, yelling all types of stuff. Okay. Good gracious. Any Super. South African curse words that I should I take I believe so. I definitely believe so. Okay. It was awesome. Okay. And, uh, yes, I, I definitely recommend <coughs> an Irish coffee. Mm. With a, oh, yeah. Is that, is that coffee with Bailey's in it? I didn't know about that until you I got it? there. It was good. Like yeah. a, uh, Did you get an iced one? I got a frozen one because it was kind of hot, hot. Is what it, is it? Is it like a is <coughs> coffee? I didn't do that on burgers. It was cream something in my and Bailey's. Hot. <laughs> yeah, it's a well, it's whiskey mm-hmm. and some sort of minty stuff and coffee and cream. Am I missing something? Uh, th- the mint is interesting. A lot of times they don't do that one. Typically, it's uh, one, it's Jameson coffee and uh, Bailey's. Yeah, and they usually uh, do a little whipped cream on yeah, top. Yeah, that's what it Jameson. was. Yeah. It was great. It was fabulous. So fabulous. Hmm. And that that always helps. Mm-hmm. And um, let me explain to you now that I've learned everything there is to know about rugby. Now, were you just learning as you watched, or were you having it explained to you? And who was explaining it? Um, Her at husband. The, at the very because beginning, she's probably was, so into right. it. You can't. You don't want to get somebody who's so into it. To have to be explaining the rules. Like, she, this is the moment for her right. of like, she's been following this her whole life. Her country has an opportunity to win the whole thing. There was a little bit of explanation. Somebody with a little bit less skin in the game needs in to the explain first the rules. Five minutes, and then, then it was over. I popped up uh, a little Google search at one point. <clears throat> but for the most part, I just observed and learned everything I need to know to tell you everything that you need to know about rugby. I know a little. So I'm going to see if what you have, uh, you, when your knowledge of watching it one game, one match surpasses the little bit that I know. It, well, it will immediately, okay. and then it will be comprehensive. So oh. are you ready? I mean, ne- you need not Wikipedia after this. Okay. All right. All right. You're familiar with soccer or what everyone else calls football. Okay. You're going to start with soccer. Okay. Hell yeah. All right. All right. You're not going to start with American football. Shh. Okay. All right. Absolutely not, Rhett. Okay. I am not. Okay. That would be a huge mistake. Okay. Right, because they can only touch yep. it with their yep. feet. Zip. All right. Picture soccer, or as I'm going to call it, football. Okay? Okay. And... Picture pe- people are just, you know, just kicking the ball. They're, they're footing it around on this, on this big green patch. I'm aware of a field, yeah. And uh, then picture all of a sudden one person deciding to up, and I'm not talking about a goalie here. I'm talking about just a player out in the middle of the field picking up the ball and just starting to run with it. Okay. And then picture... Everybody on the other team getting extremely angry, mm-hmm. like appalled. Oh my God! You're don't breaking you the rules. Understand right? the most fundamental rule of football is that you don't pick up the ball with your hands. We're gonna get you. We're gonna get you, and we're gonna hit you with as much force as we can muster when we get to you. Now this ball. Up, 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 up. If you were to reference another type of ball that I might know, what would you would you say a soccer ball or would you say an American football? Like it, picture is it, is it spherical or is it more oblong? Picture which, this which football one, player. Which one does it look like? Who's decided to pick up this soccer ball and he's it's grabbed it. Ball, okay. He's grabbed it with so much force and intention that he's turned it into like an egg shape. That he smushed it into some sort of an oblong okay. egg shape. Kind of an oval shape, almost pointed at the tip. Not pointed at the But not pointed. It's nope. not, it, it looks like nope. it could be if they just like modified a it's little a bit more. It's a ball that has been smushed into a permanently oblong okay. shape because he's so afraid. And what color is this ball? Is it, is it black and white check or is it brown? It's His hands have covered so much of the ball okay. that you can't tell. Okay. All right. Because he's so afraid of these people who are now pursuing him. And what him. is he trying to do with the ball? Is he trying to get it into a net at the end or is he trying to get it into more like an end zone, like a, like a, like a general zone? He's running towards the 
the that the end where the goal would be. Okay, but there's but no he goal. has not yet discovered. It's kind of an area. People like people are removing the goal. Oh, so the, the, so, set, the soccer goal is gone. That, well, they're, they're so outraged. They're removing the whole net and the goal. Okay. And they're, this guy doesn't deserve that kind of a goal. Okay. And then there happens to be some sort of a narrow uh, pole-type device that's down there. Oh. But that's just... I don't know why that's there. Is I it, think that's for advertising. Is it one pole or is it two it's poles? It's two poles. Oh, it's two poles. And then in between the poles, there's there was an there was a sign because it was I think that was the billboard for the soccer match. Okay. And then but there's that's getting yanked down okay. and leaving just a just a bare s- skeleton of a of a narrow, very narrow. Yeah. And what are they trying billboard. to do with the to the guy with the ball? Are they trying to they're trying tackle to tackle. They're him? trying to get this guy. They're trying to grab him. And they're and trying to bring him. Down, pu- they're trying to right? punish him for his long term handball. But he can pass it to someone else as long as he I passes just be, it just backwards listen. or laterally. Right. Stop. Stop it. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. Okay. They're so angry with this man. Okay. Who's smooshing their soccer ball? That they want to take, and they 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 do overtake him, and they smash into his shoulder area, but not the head, the shoulder and below area, and then he gets down on his knees almost, and these other the whole team is down, clumped onto him, and just and they're they're on their hands and knees, and they're they're just are, are you into it? They're smushing their. Faces and their shoulders into each other. It's and then a, does he take it and push it back between his legs? It's a, it's. It, I would call it a, some sort of a, a scrum of sorts. And they're smushed against each other. And then the other team says, "Whoa, whoa, whoa hold on! I, uh, I, I know what he's done is indefensible, but we have to, we have to take up for our boy." And then the, everybody f- joins the handballer in smushing against the other team until there's a whole scrumified clump of. Players pushing against each other while almost prone on the field, and it's just a, it's a quagmire of just pushing and grunting. I'm going to stop interrupting so he can get through the whole thing. Pad, padless pushing, and then and this goes on because he obviously minutes. will continue until the end. And then lo and behold, oh. somewhere you can't tell where, but all of a sudden. The ball pops out towards the back of the pile. Yeah, and 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 the the, the a person, and then they start chasing this person, mm-hmm. and he gets scared. So he's like, oh, he throws it to somebody to his side, or maybe behind him. Okay, right, yeah. But nobody runs ahead. Right, can't throw it forward. And then then and then everybody's go. They said, well, we don't want it. What just happened to that person in that big scrum of a thing? Well, I don't want that to happen again. So I'm gonna. Throw it to the other guy, and they just keep lateraling the ball oh. to other people to avoid another scrum. Yeah. And then a somebody's like, "Soccer, I don't want that to happen again." And then it, somebody doesn't have anybody to pass it to, and he's get, and he's and he's getting backed up. And then you know what? He in a panic, he just kicks the ball. Yeah, it goes back to his soccer he instincts. He just punts the ball mm-hmm. just to get it out of there. Right. And then the other team catches it, and they're like, "Oh." This is fun. We're on to something. And they just continue this forever in a day. Yep. yep. Until 80 minutes are up. So with no timeouts. It just kind of goes. It, it never it, stops. It's, it's like soccer in that way. And there's blood on faces. And there's no protection except a handful of the people who wear some sort of thing, I think, to prevent getting the wrestler ear. A lot of them have... The cauliflower ear, but they're looked down upon for. I bet you they are wearing the. Gear. I certainly did. Yeah, I certainly did. So, uh, and at the question, end, there's a who, there's who, a winner. Who won? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> South Africa won. She was elated. What was the score? Uh, it was close. It was within one point to the very end. How many points do you get for getting into the? Place where the goal used to be. I'm going to say five. 
I actually, I don't know. I don't know. And then I think if you kick it through the goalpost at a certain point, uh, I think you get you can get other points for that that are less than five. Did you find yourself somewhere enjoying between it? two and three? I'm, I'm guessing. Did you find yourself enjoying it more than uh, a soccer and b American football? Yes, because it's got it's got the constant activity of soccer, but it's got the violence of football. Hmm. I mean, guys were walking around and there was just blood, just blood streaming off their face like they would been. Like they were a UFC fighter or something. Yeah, it's intense. I don't and, know the difference in the rules of and Australian there's yellow rules cards. football, but I watched a bunch of Australian rules football. Well, we're not talking about that. Well, I just can't. I have rugby. no capacity for that. It was, I just can't add another sport. It's pretty similar at all. There's some differences. To the but conversation I couldn't tell you at what this they point. Are. There's yellow cards and there's red cards. I will tell you that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it is just like soccer in that way. Yeah, I take everything back. It was um, so it was are, great. I was just thanking the are, but are rugby gonna, gods that South Africa won because I was like, man, this this whole thing is going to turn sour if she doesn't get her way. And I'm talking about the mom here, but she had a great time. She had a great time. We all had a great time because because they won. And do you think that you're gonna play it professionally? Start, start yes. Where uh, watching this? Oh no, no, it's a sport. Uh, I ain't got time for that. So you're still in a, uh, you're still in Ooh, a. Z- I was exhausted. I mean, I'm exhausted just telling you we, about we, it. We all are. Like, um, I mean, good gosh. It is. Woo. Are you still in a, z- a absolute zero? We're talking z- zero, like self self motivated. Like there is no scenario in which you by yourself would make a decision to watch any sport. I'm talking like, what if you're flipping through? I know there's no flipping through. We don't really flip through mm-hmm. cornhole. Like the cornhole championship is on ESPN. Wait, it's because there's no flipping through. If if there were still flipping through, I would stop on some cornhole. And like Lando's playing tennis some now. So I'll be, I might stop on some tennis and be like, get in here, boy. Look at what what you're trying to do. Uh, but I have no occasion, like, you know, I have no occasion where where sports are presented to me. When they're presented to me, I learn a lot. You you wait for things to be presented to you, <laughs> right? And that's what channel flipping was. When you talk about cornhole, but yeah, I I'm, I mean I don't miss it. I don't miss it, and um, there's not a part of me that misses it. It's kind of like Sunday school. There's not a part of me that misses it. You think sports are as bad as Sunday school? I, no, I'm not saying that. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I have a similar experience of not missing them from my life at all, and it's really important to other people. So, <laughs> but when you saw this person who was, like, really passionately, like, watching it. I loved it for her. But like, if I was like, okay, because I really I don't I I watch very little sports, and I was point. cheering, I and watch I very I, little sports. I was into it, and you know, even the teams that I pull for, like, okay, I am technically like a Clippers fan. I'm not really a fan of any LA football. I don't really watch NFL football, but I don't find myself. Being like, I'm going to sit down and watch this Clippers game on the te- on television, unless it's like in when, the playoffs. When we had the like the semi-season but I, going tickets, to a game that's fun. I, that was the last time that I like because the boys were involved. Like Lincoln and I would go to the games with you and Lot. So like, like in person, me and Lincoln would watch the games we didn't go to, and that was fun. Yeah, I don't. I never finish watching it, especially when you're an NC State uh, fan. A lot of times you get your hopes up about, you know. Yes. Oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and then we get disappointed. So I don't find myself like having watched it and then being like, that was an incredibly fulfilling experience. But like, when I know that State's going to be playing somebody, I'm like, I just have this sense of, it's not a sense of obligation. It's like, I still care. I'm able to understand that my caring about it is not based in the rational part of my brain. There's but, an uh, you have an allegiance, and there's a there's an imp- 
there's a sense of obligation that goes along with it. Well, there's the I think I t- I cut ties completely well, there's with the, the potential, with sports when I moved out here. There's the potential of the per- the team that you want to win, winning. That's a special that's a special feeling that I can't replicate in other areas right. of my it's, life. Like this woman, this South African yeah. woman, right? It's a manufactured victory. By caring about it. Yeah, it's purely psychological. Yeah. I, I didn't have anything to do with it. But there's something about it. Now, then there are people who go a whole, like a like a, a many, many steps. My dad is such a huge fan of Georgia football. Like such a massive fan of Georgia football. Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, it's a, he's been a fan all his life. It's a good time to be a fan of Georgia football. I'm surprised he doesn't own a bulldog. He's not a dog guy. Um, but he knows everything about it. And, like, he's on the forums. You oh, know what I mean? Really? Like he's Yes. Yeah. He's so yeah. fully invested. And he's got a friend who's th- also a big Georgia fan who lives in a different state. And they're, uh, like, on the phone with each other. While the game is being played. I'm glad he has somebody. I'm glad he, I mean, I would wish, I would hope that I would have something that I'm just as passionate about as the people who are that passionate about sports. I think, I think that's a, I think it's a good thing. You know, it's like, it's nice to have something. Well, there's few things in life. And there's few things that are, that really go that far. Like, I Honestly, I don't have anything that I'm that. Well, think about it. Like I'm so passionate about I, I, music. I think that's actually a really good point. But it's not how many it's times different. during the week the experience is so different. Like if State is playing and it's a close game, and again, I'm just in there by myself. Locke would watch stuff with me. Shepard doesn't care, so mm-hmm. I'm kind of just like watching it by myself. Jesse doesn't care, and she's a Carolina grad anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, the level of intensity of my reactions. There's not another thing that I'm currently engaging with where I literally would be like, yes, yes, come on, yo, yeah. Like, what, name another scenario in my life right now where I will yell that loudly right. about something. I mean, if I when go. it's not a bit. If I go to a concert, I'm going to do some yelling. But, like, what's he going to sound like? But I'm going to be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, I want, what, what, what noise do I make at a concert? Uh, yeah, it's a little woo. It's stuff like that, right? Yeah, it's I mean, like, it's, it's a that's woo-woo! a different, it's a different it's like, experience. It a, yeah, it's but, great. It's, but, but it may it's be not, it may be a better experience. But it's not an unfettered, just release of like primal energy. Primal, <laughs> primal. That's what I'm getting at. What what other time? Like, think about it. Like, what other time in your life? Because I don't, I listen, I'm not a road rage guy. Of course, I've never been to a battle of the bands. As, as many times as my fake rants have gone viral and every time people are con- are completely convinced that they're real, <laughs> uh, I don't actually ever really get that way um, in real life. And like I, I've never, I don't, I, don't, I don't road rage, I don't get mad at people and yell at people. I don't do that. But... Sports are the like opportunity for those emotions to come out mm-hmm. okay. in a way. You know what I'm saying? It's it, there's and it is primal. I think primal is a good word because we don't have opportunities for primal experiences in modern day life, and so sports is the receptacle for people to act like fools. <laughs> I mean, let's just face it. We're getting really, right. really excited and upset also about things that we're just sitting next to. Yeah, it's a safe... We're sitting next to it. ...place to cut loose. We're mountain time seating. Yeah. Looking at the mountains. The mountains are doing all the work. We're taking credit for it. We think that the underwear that we wore that day is causing the quarterback to do something different. Like, we're idiots. We're morons. Yeah, you are. We think, well, I yelled really loudly on third down, and they got a false start. I was responsible for that. That's a, the closest you can come that, that's to cool. having any sort of influence is maybe being loud enough on third down. But yeah, when you're in your, especially when you're in your living room. <laughs> yeah. You have you no influence. You are in a completely sealed bubble. You have it's just a completely isolated. But experience. you give him you it's a safe space where you have permission 
to just care deeply and to engage these emotions. And um, but doing it in a group that that's awesome good. too. But and I guess there are, and I've been told that there are, there are like NC State groups of people out here. Because, you know, we live in Los Angeles. Lots of people have moved from other places. Yeah. There are people who get together and, like, watch state games. And I've never thought, mm. I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to, that feels like a, a level of commitment that I'm not willing to make. Right. But, but if you met a guy or a gal, you met a person who was really into watching NC State athletics. I might say, let's watch it together. Yeah, and they, they invited you over. Like, Locke and I had a lot of, lot of fun watching stuff together. You know, Shepard and I watch a lot of stuff together, just not sports. But do you really want a Wolfpack friend? Because, I mean. No, I'm just exploring. I don't. They just don't win enough. This doesn't feel like a, well, having someone to commiserate with. I was actually thinking about this. My dad, uh, being a. Self-flagellation, Being a man. Georgia fan. It's funny because, I, speaking of this exact concept. So, okay, you probably don't know. Uh, NC State beat Clemson in football last week. Oh. Now, typically this would good be good for us. Typically this would be a huge deal, but Clemson's not any good this year. No. Oh. But they've been incredible for millennium over a decade. Not millennium. They they were they were horrible 30 years ago, but or 20 years ago. But, you know, since like the Dabo Swinney, Sweeney, whatever his name is, you know who I'm talking about. He's like your quintessential football coach. And you would know him if you saw him or heard him. Uh He's been there for like 12 years or whatever, and they have had like 10 win seasons. They've won the national championship twice. They played in the national championship multiple times. The only other teams that have been as good as them in the past decade are Georgia and Alabama, right? And this clip of him on a radio show just went viral like last night. I found it. And it was like, a kid or a younger person calling in and complaining and all the thing the thing that was on Twitter was just the his rant, this five minute rant. From the coach? From or the, the coach. Oh, in response to the kid. In response to this kid. And basically <laughs> it was like I mean, it was a little like he's so frustrated because he's won the national championship and he just got beat by state and he's four and four. Like he's not having a good year. But they're all calling for his head because he's not having a good year, even though he won 11 games last year. And the thing he was saying was uh, expectation versus appreciation. He's like, we've been so good for so long that it has changed into expectation and not appreciation. And so I was thinking about my dad and how big of a fan of Georgia he is. And, you know, they won the national championship. They haven't lost a game. They didn't lose a game last year. They haven't lost a game this year as of recording this. And so being a fan of them becomes hoping that they do not lose. Like we have to win if we, because in football you lose and this kind of screws your whole season up, right? Mm. Yeah, it's, t it's tough being at the top. So huh? the psychological thing, like you talk about like, do you really want someone to watch state with knowing that it's always gonna be a struggle. We're gonna have these really passionate, we're gonna knock off Carolina, we're gonna knock off Duke every once in a while. It's gonna be this passionate thing, mm -hmm. but we're gonna have these like, we're gonna kind of be in the middle of the pack. Yeah. In a lot of ways. We're gonna have the good years, and we're gonna have the bad years, we're gonna have a lot of middle of the road years. So from a psychological standpoint, which one do you really, really want? Do you wanna be the like we always win? I'm I know I'm saying this because I'm trying to make it I'm trying to I'm trying to be I'm trying to say I don't want I don't even want us to be great. Because once you get great, then you just wait to lose. Mm -hmm, okay. But my dad is sitting there on the phone with his buddy. Just like in fact, my, Cole was home. Uh, well, Eli was home from school, so my my nephew, Cole's son, and they were going to see mom and dad on a Saturday. That like the one Saturday that Eli was going to be in town, and Cole was like, "This is like the window of time when I could kind of take him down there and hang out." But it was during the Georgia game. Okay, and it was like it was like Georgia and all. It was somebody they were definitely going to beat, but. They weren't winning at halftime. <laughs> and Cole was just like, you, it's like, dad can't, he can't extricate himself from it. He <laughs> cannot extricate himself from this. He's so in it. Yeah. He's like, yes, my grandson is here, and I dearly love my grandson. But this is Georgia football we're, 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 yeah. we're experiencing right now. And, you know. Charge $50 for uh, unbehaved course, kids. Of course they won. Of course they won. Hmm. 
So I guess I don't want, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm just going to keep being alone in my house, uh, you know, once a week approximately to tune into an NC State game, whether it's football or basketball. That's where I draw the line. I don't move into any other sports. Okay. Getting either really upset or really happy in just a complete bubble that influences no one but myself. And then my wife, who will kind of walk by me and just kind of look at me if I get <laughs> especially loud about something. That's me watching sports. Yeah. I'm just going to take not that. quite like Link watching rugby, though, yeah. and thinking that it most it's... closely relates to soccer. A little different, a little different, a little different. I'm just going to take a hike. <laughs> Well, you're, it's probably not even healthier. literally. It's probably healthier. Uh, it's my wreck this week, so uh, why don't you sing the wreck theme song? We're bringing it back. One eight 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 earpod one. That's not it, dude. One eight 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 earpod one. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> it's a wreck. The wreck theme song. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a moron. Wreck baby, wreck baby, one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, never done really, it. It's not really a song, is it? It, it is a song. I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, a song. it's a portion of a song. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Wreck baby, wreck baby, one, two, three, four. Okay, uh, my wreck is a YouTube video, which I just found. If you just search Andy Griffith football story from 1953, I think... Uh, I think maybe that one will give it to you. What it was, was football. You can also search that. Andy Griffith, you know, from the Andy Griffith show. I'm from the Matlock. Uh, he has this routine from way back then. Where he, but basically, I realized that I was channeling the Andy Griffith it, when telling the uh, my rugby story because he describes... What football is would be like if you had never seen it before. Yeah, from his like, like backwoods. I think like I've his, seen this. His country, his country, like backwoods kind of. Just so you know, I did not pick up on the fight. That's what, <laughs> what what? That's what you were referencing. Andy, oh, well, I wasn't. You weren't referencing it. You I, I have a, I have a vague it. recollection of this, but yeah. it's like it's a it's a comedy routine, right? From Andy Griffith. So yeah. Uh, if you if you like what I said about rugby, I was just channeling the 1953 Andy Griffith. Well, what it I was th I think was football. I, I've seen what you're talking about. It's very funny, and it's a little you know. It's just it, it's probably Andy a Griffith. Andy's is the football routine probably started much like Link's rugby routine. You know, yeah, it starts somewhere, and then you you polish it over time. You know? <laughs> And you get you make sure uh, the different parts land, and that, and then it becomes what Andy did in 19. Listen, if you have any feedback on anything that we said today, we want to hear from you. You can call us. Wreck baby, wreck baby, <laughs> one two three four one eight 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 earpod one. And yeah, because we want to get into it. Yeah, so we like your voicemails. Let let us let us know if you have any opinions on our opinions on parents, kids. Parenting, anything children, that we say at all on the rugby. podcast, we want to hear. We would love to revisit we, these we, things. We ain't scared. Based on your feedback, we ain't scared. Let us have it, and we'll talk at you next week. Hi, Rhett, and specifically Link. This is in regards to your recent fanny pack acquisition and your question about why women are the only ones who get to carry bags. Um, there's a really good episode of a podcast called Articles of Interest, and the episode's called Pockets, and it's all about the history of pockets and women's pockets and women's bags. That's my rec. Bye. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.